our wonderful host and also the gallery owner. So we understand that it's really challenging to put this sort of show together. It's not a traditional show where it's like I put the work on the wall for $500 and then somebody gives me money. So you understand without Louise's support, this just couldn't happen. So the intimacy of the space and the intimacy of the work, I think, is just wonderfully appreciated by all of us. And so thank you, Louise. Yeah, thank you. So thank you, everybody involved in making this happen, all the contributors to this quite complex installation with lots of stories. So this film that you see now, Sophie, is the first of three movies on this loop that you're going to be watching. And the voice you can hear on that video is my daughter's voice. The person who wrote the story of Sophie is in that front window. That's Camel Bird, the writer. Um, um, Born in Tasmania, as it happens, just down the road from where I lived. So there's a very strong Tasmanian connection to this whole thing. Um, look, it's weird. I don't understand it. But this piece here, this is by a Tasmanian Palawa um, Aboriginal woman. And she hasn't got a title for that, so we just made, it up, made one up from our conversations. And it's called What Happened? It just happened, something that happened when she had got some indigo dye and did some tie dye and that's what happened. This also happened on um, this silk, this mesh, those blue forms that you can see and there's another silk near that with a coil in the same colour. Now they're got by Vicky and she's titled them simply Microscope and Organism. So once sort of the, I suppose, the scientific view, if you like, or the view that you have through a, an instrument that certainly wouldn't have been available to an Aboriginal woman way back, and the organism is this spiral form that's been available to humans since, well, forever. Mm. So these primal forms of circling, spiraling, and crossing are, I guess, my passion. Um, and so I'm attracted to scientists, science, scientific data. And scientists. And scientists <laughs> who are similarly obsessed or fascinated or drawn to the, these movements, these gestures in nature that we're very much a part of. So if you look around, you'll find a lot of that. This is Bill's film. He's going to talk about that. The, uh, the last film in the loop that I've made is... Um, Euphosia superba, which is Antarctic krill, mm -hmm. and a, an Antarctic krill is a little crustacean, not that long, and there are representations of that krill hang, hanging about here and there. And I got to know about krill when I went to Antarctica and discovered the Continuous Plankton Recording Program, which has been going for many years, since the late 1920s. And this is the original mesh some of the, which the greenish stuff has actually been through the Southern Ocean collecting data in the form of live um, phytoplankton and sometimes krill get caught in there as well. And they're looking at the health of the ocean and there are two ways, generally speaking, that these scientists assess the health of the ocean and one is very simply by looking at the colour. The more green there, there is indicates more chlorophyll. Is that right? So they just look, do that and have a look. But they also want numbers. So they have ruled it off into sectors and they put those sectors under a microscope and count. And they relate the numbers of um, beasties in those sectors with the track data on the ship. So where they are and what time. So they can then work out the distribution and abundance of krill. And but they pretty much apparently match up the sort of intuitive first off look at the colour and the numbers, generally speaking. And I've learned from Bill that a similar kind of phenomenon exists when you're looking at the things that you look at, the fishes in the sea. And so it's up to you, Bill, you can talk about it. Thank you, Lisa.